Hello. Good morning, Ann Arbor. Great. Um, so yeah, I, today I would like to talk to you about um, clean energy. Um, and you will see these slides. Uh, I hope you can read them well. But the idea here is that I would like to first um, paint a picture of the today's energy landscape. And then after that, go into what is our solution here at a very small company in Ann Arbor with, with the vision on one day changing this landscape for, for the better. So this is the reality today. Today, energy is very dirty. And it's not just the fact that energy accounts for more than 40% of all global carbon emissions, but also the fact that energy is the largest contributor of, of greenhouse um, emissions. After energy, it's transportation. And that's only 16%. So it's a massive issue, and it's not just about emissions. It's also about the fact that we're all see seeing already that the geopolitical effect of not having your own sources of electricity where you, ge where you both generate and use the electricity, for example, that um, can cause significant issues. Um, Europe is a very good example, which hopefully um, it's, it's going to, to resolve soon. But yeah, so this is, this is today, and when we think about energy, it's a, it's a massive problem. And how, as a very small company, do we have to look at this? Here is one very, exam uh, very simple example of how you can look at two different parameters. One is the cost of electricity that you generate. So you can see that we have cheap versus expensive on the um, y-axis. And on the bottom, we have how much carbon you generate with that source of electricity. So ideally, where you do not want to be, is to be very expensive and also generate a lot of carbon. Where you do want to be, the sweet spot, is where you generate very little carbon and you're very cheap. And this is what we have today, that you, you already see that coal, it's, it's awfully attractive because it's dirt cheap. And you know there have been many years and years of development, but also government incentives and, and all of that that has made and, uh, coal and uh, fossil fuels in general, very attractive source of energy. But also you see that hydropower, for example, if you have access to water, um, it's, it's a wonderful source of electricity because it's cheap, but also it generates uh, very little carbon, if, if any. And what's really important here is to point out what solar and wind have done over the past decade especially. Um, they are making it to the green spot thanks to you know massive scale deployments, um, again, um, due to many government incentives that exist, not only in the US, but around the world. And these great strides have really enabled clean sources of electricity, such as wind and solar, to really be added to, to our um, landscape of energy today. But there's plenty more work to be done, and that's, that's what I'm going to talk about next. Another aspect of energy is the fact that energy right now is for the rich. And by that, I mean, where you generate electricity today, it has to be centralized. The reason it has to be centralized it ha is that it has to be a massive scale for it to make economic sense. That's why when we have power plants, they're in remote areas, and then you have to get the electricity on the grid back to big cities where they're going to be used. You never see a decentralized source of power anywhere near a city, and that's because scale really matters. And when we talk about scale, it means a lot of money to, to install a power plant. And that's why energy right now really is most accessible to, 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 to the richest nations. In fact, when you look at Africa, for example, in sub-Saharan Africa, fewer than half of the people even have access to a power grid. So even if you generated clean source of, um, you found a clean source of electricity and you generated it at a power plant, you still have to get it to these people. How do you do that? And these are some of the questions that we as, as citizens and scientists have to really care about because all these nations are going to have to develop for, for us as, as the world to live a better life. And this is exactly what we are trying to, to figure out at APT Solar Solutions, for example. So here is another chart. Here we're looking at how much the source of electricity generates um, energy. So you have more energy on the top, less energy on the bottom. 
we have how much space you occupy for your power plant. Less space versus more space. So again, the sweet spot for this case is that you take very little space and you generate a lot of electricity. So up on the um, left corner on your side. And then you, where you do not want to be is to generate very little electricity and take a lot of space. And this is what we have as our sources of electricity today. So you already see that, again, fossil fuels are exactly where you want them to be. Sadly, it makes a lot of sense to go after fossil fuels. And that's why we have. And one of the other things to point out here is that solar farms and wind turbines have, have really tried hard to, to make the economics work, but there is still a lot of work to be done with regards to how much space do you need in order to generate electricity. And the reason this plot is very important is that when we talk about decentralized generation of power, you want to generate electricity where you're going to use it instead of having to lose so much of the electricity by simply want to, wanting to transmit it from a very far place at a power plant all the way to the city. So ideally, we want to have a source of electricity where you can generate it in spot, especially in urban areas, and use it there at the same time. And so this is a very good example. Solar farms have done significant you know, uh, contribution to how much clean electricity is being generated today. However, there are also downsides with about using the exact same technology for all applications. That's, not, that's never the case, where you can use the same solution for all sorts of applications. And here's a sad example of, for example, solar farms um, right now are being, we, ha we're, we have to deforest in order to make room for solar farms to be deployed. This is one example of a New York Times article that came out last month indicating that the solar farms, for example, this 134 acre piece of forest that was, the trees were cut down to make room for, for this solar farm that generates 15 megawatts of power in, in Virginia. It's along Highway 59. And so the way we were tackling this is that instead of having these flat solar panels, we have started looking at the exact same problem differently. And instead of having a two-dimensional flat solar panel, we've stacked these solar cells on top of each other in fact, shrinking the size of a typical solar panel into a much smaller footprint structure that you can collect light vertically instead of horizontally, like a typical solar farm. And in other words, instead of having a solar farm, we call our technology a solar forest. And the reason for that is that we can collect light vertically along dead spaces that are not being used today. Uh, this is. This allows us to go along highways where we don't have to purchase real estate. This can go inside the cities because we're not really bound to any specific real estate. These can generate electricity exactly where this electricity is being used. Therefore, we are both generation and distribution of electricity at the same time. And so, for example, if we were to just put um, our solar systems along I-94, it generates enough power to, to power the entire city of Ann Arbor. Looking at this exact problem differently now is our city of Ann Arbor, if we want to power the entire city with solar, we have two solutions if, if, it's, if it's just solar. You either can cover the entire city of Ypsilanti with a solar farm, and we know how, how gentrification works, is when we use the wrong solution for, for the problem. Um, and so that's, that's one solution. The other solution is that we already have I-94. There, there is, it's a dead space. We have so much... Um, potential along this highway to generate all of the electricity needed to power the city. And that's really how we look at this problem. And so going back to, to my last chart, this is, this is the image that we're trying to realize at APT Solar Solutions, is that solar, farm has, solar farms have done significant contribution to where, where we're today. For the first time, um, solar farms are being competitive against coal and all other fossil fuels. But there's so much more that we can do to make solar also become a um, type of electricity where you can not only generate it where you want to use it, but also the distribution is along the same grid. And finally, um, this, is, this is the takeaway message that I want to leave you all with. The fact that clean energy revolution has already begun and we all have to contribute and play our own critical role. Thank you.